Orbit analysis. Orbit analysis is intended for people who have machines with journal bearings, also known as sleeve bearings or plane bearings, mostly for big critical bits of equipment, like steam turbines, gas turbines, great big compressors, because then you can justify the measurement technique. So here is what's happening inside these machines. You've got the journal bearing itself. The, well, there's the bearing part with the special metal. And here's the shaft, or where it is inside the bearing, we call it the, the journal. Um, so sitting underneath this is a wedge of oil that forms. So we pump the oil in. That keeps it supported, keeps it stable, keeps it cool, all sorts of good stuff. But unfortunately, if we've got some unbalance or whatever is causing the shaft to move, that vibration doesn't transmit well through the oil out to the bearing. And so therefore an accelerometer may not pick up what's going on. So we use these proximity probes instead. These two probes are sensitive to the distance between the tip and the shaft. So as it moves in this sort of direction, this one picks it up, moves in that direction, this one picks it up. The fact is we use it to triangulate. These two probes are mounted 90 degrees apart and we kind of triangulate the motion of the center of the shaft. And I'll explain that a bit more in a second. The third probe here is not in the same plane as these ones. This one might be at the end of the rotor or somewhere where there's a key or keyway and it measures that displacement and that gives us our runs, once per revolution uh, information. And one of the ways we would, uh, well, what we'd like to be able to tell is just what is the rotor doing? What is the journal doing within that bearing? In this instance, we have oil whirl. This wedge of oil is actually following the shaft around uh, as it moves in this big, wide motion. It's using up all of the clearance that's available, hopefully still keeping that wedge there, but this is you know, quite high vibration. It can't be any higher at this particular location. There can't be any more motion because it would start wearing away the bearing. But this is the sort of thing we'd like. We, we want to know in essence what the shaft is doing, what the center of the shaft is doing. Because there are other faults in addition to unbalance and misalignment and preload and these sorts of faults. We're interested in the rotor dynamics as well, particularly as we go through the critical speeds. Uh, so in this instance, exaggerated, but that's the motion at the first critical, let's say, a lot of detail we could go into, but I'd be interested in how do I take measurements to tell that's what's going on? Well, imagine if we had our two proximity probes at 90 degrees apart and they were taking the measurements and we compared the two sine waves, we end up with a Lissajous figure, as it's often called, or an orbit. We plot the two sine waves against each other, we end up with a circle, if it is moving in a circular motion. And we plot that on a graph, as you can see here, y being the top, x being the side. There are so many details I'm leaving out, but just to give you a general idea, the orbit tells us what the center of the shaft is doing. So here we see this nice little orbit because it's moving in this small circular motion. More here, much more there, less and, and less, sort of similar. Because that's what the shaft is doing, that's what the rotor is doing. Now we may not be able to put proximity probes in all these locations, I'm just showing this for illustrative purposes, but this is the orbit and that orbit tells us, you know, it, it may be small and circular, that's good. It may be bigger and elliptical and then we have to start to ask, well, is that okay? Could it mean there's some preload or misalignment? If it gets big, uh, then it could be uh, the oil whirl we just looked at or oil whip.